Oh! Devil Hunter Yoko! What the hell? Part of me should have figured that the show would be as violent and nonsensical as it is, but I think I was so lashed on to the fact that it was a magical girl anime that I got blindsided. I can honestly say that Devil Hunter Yoko is the most bizarre magical girl show I've seen. Mostly because even it can't escape the times in which it's made. Lots of blood, lots of boobs. I'm actually quite confused over who this was made for. The obvious answer would be guys, considering all the nudity and all the sex jokes, but then you have all those scenes where Yoko's mooning over some random bishi and all the show's stumbling attempts at female empowerment. It's like they were trying to appeal to both and utterly failed. Well, maybe fail is a strong word, but these two things do not and should not mix. I don't care how many cute guys and girl talk you cram into your show. Tits have a way of making themselves stand out. And from a guy's perspective, the cheesecake and fan service -y stuff were all done way better in... Well, anything, really. Okay, maybe not anything, but the first episode is still pretty piss poor in the art department. But, to the show's credit, the next few episodes show a steady improvement in animation. Does the rest of the show improve? Fucking no. At the very least, the next two episodes are shorter than the first one. The very least. We catch up with Yoko slaying some random tentacle demon, and it seems that Yoko's abilities have grown since we last saw her. And it also seems that Asuka is filling in that friend whose life revolves way too closely around the main heroine role. You know the type, the best friend character who seemingly has nothing better to do with her time than to play cheerleader for the main heroine, like uh, Tomoyo from Cardcatcher Sakura, or Naru from Sailor Moon, and why the fuck do I know all this crap? That's your best time yet! <laughs> well, it, this one was pretty puny. Mm -mm. The demons aren't getting weaker, Yoko. You're just getting stronger. Yeah? Yeah. Hmm. I'm finding this very hard to masturbate to. So, after a short fan service scene with just the briefest moment of nipple, we witness what may be the clumsiest exposition dump I've seen in quite some time. <sighs> I can hear the old bat now. Now that you've become a devil hunter, I think I've earned a little rest and relaxation. But you must continue your training, for to be a devil hunter is to be ever alert. Oh, and by the way, forget about having all the sex you want stuff I said earlier. I was drunk. Jeez, I can't believe it. They actually left me here to take care of the house while they went off to have fun. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Yoko. I'm... Sure, what you had to say was very important and stuff, but I was distracted by how many fucking video game consoles you have. This girl has a Sega Game Gear and Master System, a Super Famicom, what I think is a Turbo Duo. Wait, it's Japan, so I think it was called the PC Engine Duo over there, and... Is that a fucking Atari Lynx? Alright, I can buy that she has magical powers. And I can buy that her family is so rich that they can afford her crap like this, despite the fact that neither her mom or her grandmother seemingly has a job. But I refuse to believe that anyone ever owned a Turbo Duo. Huh? I'm looking for the Mono family. Do you know them? The Monos? Huh. Well, let me think. Nope, no Monos, but them woods over there is called Monotoma no Mori, the Forest of the Evil Orb. The Forest of the Evil Orb? Uh, yep. Legend has it that the forest enshrines certain spirits whose blessing have kept this land free of evil. Now that they're bulldozing it to build that new apartment complex, who knows what sort of mischief they'll scare up. Gee, I wonder if this will come up later in the episode. <laughs> Little doggy, can you tell me where the monos live? What's that? You don't know either? <laughs> okay, this has nothing to do with the show, but this has always bugged me. Why the fuck do people talk to their pets? And not just talk to them, but talk to them like we're idiots. I mean, if we see someone say hi to a plant or a sign or a building, we'll cross the street just to get the fuck away from them. But if we see someone have a full-on conversation with their dog, 
All of a sudden, they're Zoe Deschanel quirky. Well, steering the video back on track here, this random girl who's been trying to find Yoko up until now finally introduces herself and pleads with her to train her to become a devil hunter. Yeah, I want to become a devil hunter and chop up demons just like you, Miss Yoko. Hmm. Well, I... I don't think... I'll do anything. Chop wood, carry water from the well, wash your underwear. Why do I get the feeling that Annie Wilkes here is trying to stop herself from finishing that sentence with... With my tongue! Your grandma said this could turn me into a devil hunter. She sent it to me special delivery. She did, huh? Terrific. Yeah, and she said that if I trained with you, I could become a devil hunter too. And we could chop up demons together, Miss Yoko. <laughs> really? Okay, the last word you want to hear from a crazy bitch like her is chop. You've got company. How do you do? Azusa Kansaki, uh, devil hunter in training, uh -huh. at your service. <laughs> Miss Yoko is going to train me to chop demons. Stop saying chop! You're scaring the general! The general's what I call my penis. Surprise, surprise, it seems that the haunted woods that were so carefully mentioned earlier are finally taking action sabotaging the construction site and knocking the power out. Right as Yoko and Annie are taking a bath together. Sure, they've only met a few hours ago, but what's an afternoon between two strangers for a sapphic bath scene? Not enough. Finally having a chance to prove herself, Annie races onto the scene. Very stupidly, I might add. Oh, wow, maybe I should have waited for Miss Yoko to get here. Well, yes, you should have, but you know what you really should have done? Bring your fucking magic glove thingy! <sighs> okay, there is no way that Annie is this stupid. This is just the plot trying to crowbar as much tension into the story using the most contrived way possible. You think the Power Rangers went anywhere without their morpher? Yes, the show where teenagers routinely fight styrofoam monsters has a more believable script than Devil Hunter Yoko. Just dwell on that for a moment, will you? Azusa Kansaki, Devil Hunter! <sighs> it's raining. Huh? <laughs> you just now noticed you didn't have your magic glove on. You know, before I started Anime Abandon, I thought there was a threshold to stupidity. How wrong I was. Of course, Yoko saves the day, panty flashes and all, and tells Annie to not be such a dumbass and wait for her the next time around, because she clearly exhibits the maturity and presence of mind to handle fighting dangerous demons. Then again, look who she's learning from. But the two barely have enough time for a breather before more Evil Dead rape vines burst out of the earth. And then this guy shows up and I don't even know who the fuck he is or why he's suddenly such a threat. This is just more paper-thin contrivance. We already know that Annie here is going to sack up and save the day. Just go ahead and do it. But cool it on the panty flashes during the transformation sequence, will ya? I already feel dirty enough for looking at her in the bath. Thankfully, Annie's transformation sequence is way more restrained than Yoko's, and they both instantly defeat this random bad guy that appeared for seemingly no reason. whoop de fucking do And to rub salt in the wound, this is how we close out the second episode. A ruined shrine. You know, Azusa, I'm beginning to understand there's a lot more to this job than just hunting and killing demons and stuff. Oh, they're not going here, are they? The job of a devil hunter is to protect and preserve the old ways. There are other kinds of spirits, ones that watch over our rivers and mountains and forests. It's our job to protect those spirits from the depredations of man. Oh, fuck you and your preachy bullshit. If I wanted to watch a thinly veiled environmental message, I'd just watch Avatar again. We begin episode three with... Oh my god, would you get a load of this guy? Waist length, swishy hair, a porcelain face you just want to punch, and that completely insincere, flowery cadence of voice that just sends your piss boiling. Time 
is like an endless abyss. For over a thousand years, I have dreamed of this moment, my beloved. Please take these, my truest feelings, into your heart. <laughs> yes, take my feelings into your heart. And I also promise to make sure it doesn't get in your hair, too. I know it'll be absolutely shocking when I say this, but I do not understand the appeal of species. I know that I'm a mostly straight male and I'm not supposed to get it, but I just feel like women who like men who look like women are probably lying to themselves a little. I don't know, maybe I'm being too harsh. We all have our kinks and attractions. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but... I have a naked lady fetish. It looks like Bishi Goodbody is only the product of Yoko's hormone-laden dreams. Or at least it seems that way until Yoko is pulled into another dimension and meets him face to face. <laughs> I'm sure it'll all make sense by the end of the episode. <laughs> uh, oh god. Excuse me, why am I here? All is not well here. As a result of angering his father, Master Biryu has lost his freedom. Oh, how handsome and regal he is. Many women have been entranced by his beautiful eyes. Lady, you're laying it on a little thick. You might as well be saying that he's good with kids too and ejaculates chocolate. I mean, that's what women want, right? A, a gigantic choco cock? Uh, can someone get back to me on that? Okay, regardless of him being a bishi, I do not understand what's so appealing about good body here. The man has a forehead you could screen a movie on. It's like somebody smooshed his face down a few inches. Hey, if you wanted to get rid of your virginity that badly, you should have said something sooner. I mean, I know a guy. Or... dozen? Princess Yoko! <sighs> uh, oh, a demon! <laughs> you picked the wrong time to mess with me, demon! Nobody messes with Yoko Mano's love life! The only thing getting between me and cock is my pussy! Enraged at the prospect of not getting her burrito stuffed, Yoko cleans house on the sudden demon that appears for no reason. That's kind of becoming a signature of the show, ain't it? Anywho's its bishy good body bamps out of the room, leaving Yoko with nothing but questions. What happened to him? His ability to project his true essence is limited. What does that mean? It is as I told you. His freedom has been taken from him, and now once more he is cut off from the outside world. What you saw just now was an astral projection of Biryu's own life force. Is that clear? No. The old woman explains to Yoko that if she wants to slide down Bishi Goodbody's fireman pole, she'll have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with two demons who have imprisoned him in some kind of crystalline orb. And, well, that's the plot. No, really, for the next 15 minutes, you just watch Yoko fight more... You guessed it! More demons that appear for no reason. God, who'd have thunk? You know, as formulaic as Monster of the Day shows are, at least the episodic plot moves along like a story should. This, on the other hand, plots along like a goddamn video game. Yoko beats a monster, something glowy happens, and then she's whisked off automatically to fight the next monster. You ever wonder why movies based off video games suck? This is why. And true to video game design, Yoko and the princess she saved from the last fight run into a random encounter. You know, I really am amazed at the lengths this show goes to to make me care even less than I previously thought possible. Even if you were in it for the fight scenes, and God help you if you are, they're not any good. They're just the same old tired speed line fights we've been seeing for the past hour and a half. I'm tempted to say that this is the worst episode of the series because... It doesn't have enough story to fill out even the standard 25 minutes. It's just fight scenes and filler.
While Yoko's out on her wood hunt, Annie and Asuka have been trying to find her, which you'd think would be a natural course the story would take. But ultimately, the two divining Yoko's location and teleporting there does absolutely nothing at all, especially when you consider that they don't factor into how Yoko gets back to her own world. My god, this episode eats! You know, it's actually kind of refreshing to see an anime that's horrible because it fails at the most basic concepts of storytelling and not just because it's fucking weird and offensive. This is just plain pure vanilla bad. And so, surprising absolutely no one, Yoko defeats yet another nameless demon and frees Bishi Goodbody to be with his lady love, leaving Yoko with a nasty case of blue vulva. Thanks to the power of the Shimiseki, and to your great skill and courage, we have been united once more. <laughs> so I guess that's the end of the story, huh? Man, this sucks. Took the words right out of my mouth. Thank God there's only one more part to this, because this is just dreadfully bad. Tune in next week for the third and final part of this trilogy. Till next time.